This is Meredith McDonough. Welcome all back to News Through the Soul. This is the pre-recorded episode with Thea Willett. I'm happy to have Thea Willett on as my guest today. Thea is, Willett is located in Ottawa, Canada. She's a meditation instructor, Quantum Touch ambassador, Quantum Touch level one instructor and practitioner. And um, Thea, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Um, I feel like we have grown together on our journey through Quantum Touch um, so for those who are, I guess, not familiar, um, you know, quantum touch is an energy healing modality and, um, Thea, I would love to just, you know, welcome and uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah. I think we met, I think when I was becoming an instructor, I think that's when I had come across you and then you had just become an instructor. So yeah, I came to quantum touch through my own need for healing. Uh, fertility wasn't easy for us. And uh, I just always had this knowing that there had to be something more. And eventually that had brought us, brought me to learning about meditation and then going further with healing and energy work. And that brought me to quantum touch. And yeah, it's been, it's been great. Yeah, I would love to hear more about your journey because I know we have listeners who, especially with, you know, the collective, you know, global trauma of COVID and, um, you know, of course, with just many different factors happening in the world, stress in general, you know, people who are desiring to conceive. Um, and I would just love to hear more about, I guess, but more in detail, like what led you to find mm -hmm. energy work for fertility? Right. Okay. So let's just start at the beginning, I yeah, guess. The beginning. I love the beginning. <laughs> Uh, so I became an ultrasound technician. Uh, I was working at a clinic and we specialize in women's health. So OBGYN, and we were attached with a fertility clinic too. So I would do mainly, uh, pelvic scanning, uh, pregnancy, and then the fertility clinic, they did, uh, eventually build an OR in the building. So we would be involved in IVF procedures. So, yeah. uh, embryo egg retrievals and embryo transfers. Uh, and then those women would have their daily ultrasounds to track their cycles and find ovul notice ovulation. So I was involved in that. Uh, so I kind of, and I really had this passion for the women. Like I, I wanted to help them and be there for them. And I was, I, I got to see their journey. You got to see the women when they started on, I mean, we would scan them cycle day three and you would see them and then they would come back cycle day nine. And then you would see them until they ovulated. And depending what hormones they were on, you felt that roller coaster with them. I mean, you're in the room with them. It's, it seems to be this safe place and you just, you really connect with them. And my heart just always went out to them. And then I had gotten, we had gotten married and we wanted to start kids and I wanted to start kids right away. So we were trying and trying and early on we had a pregnancy and it was really early. So I just kind of brushed it off. You know, women have miscarriages all the time. Uh, I mean, bonus looks like we can get pregnant. So that's awesome. And we'll get pregnant again. Not a big deal. And I didn't tell anyone, didn't make a big deal about it. Just kind of whatever, pretended it didn't happen almost. Uh, and then months went on and we still didn't get pregnant. And it's like the weight of that grief. It started to like pull on me. Right. Because yeah, it, I, I never processed it. I never took the time to acknowledge it. And then we were coming up to almost a year and I knew once we had an unsuccessful pregnancy in a year, we'd be, we could be diagnosed as infertile. We could go through fertility treatment and that's where I work. And I was now being faced with being in the same position as my patients and I just had a really good heart to heart with my husband and we were like, you know what, we're just going to stop trying. It's something's not meant to be. We're just going to stop. We're going to start to have some fun and not make everything about tracking and planning and getting pregnant. And I had planned a weekend getaway with some girls and my husband had done some, um, he went out with his friends and sure enough, we got pregnant that month. Yeah. The beauty of that surrender. I know. <laughs> and I just fully had to, you know what? I was like, we spent the first year of our marriage, me mostly being like, we have to get pregnant. It was like this pressure. It was just like, we have to get pregnant. And I think 
I brought in the whole, like, I work at a fertility clinic, so I know how to get pregnant. And then <laughs> when I could it, like, it was very humbling. Uh, but yeah, we just, we just let go and made it more about living. And then we got pregnant with our son. Uh, and the interesting thing about that pregnancy was at 20 weeks, there was kind of a discrepancy with my cervix where they thought they told me I had a short cervix. And then this is where doctors have different interpretations. Like one doctor said, you're fine. The other doctor said, no, you need to be at home. You're on bed rest until you deliver. And it's like, well, those are two totally different things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait a second. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then like, I would scan these patients. I would scan the women with short cervixes and I knew what, like they would tell me their stories. And I was like, there is no way I can sit and do nothing for 20 weeks. Like, yeah. and I remember driving home from that ultrasound and I said a prayer and this is before I had any understanding of meditation or energy work. So it was more of like a Christian mindset prayer. And I was like, God, please save this baby. Like, mm -hmm. right. Like, yeah. and, and just be with me. And the weeks went on and my cervix didn't change. And then it was like, I held my breath every time. And then once I got to 24 weeks, I was like, okay, well, if I deliver, at least the baby will be viable and it'll be okay. And then it was like, I got to 28 weeks and I'm like, okay, now I'm at the third trimester. It'll be okay. And then it was like, yeah. now I got to 35 weeks and right. And then I hit my due date and I was like, wow, great. Um, so all that panic for nothing, like I just hit my due date and I ended up going three days over with him. Uh, and then once he, I think was a year old, then we wanted to start trying for our second. And then once again, uh, it took a couple months and then I had gotten pregnant and I mean, I have the beauty of my job at ultrasound, so I could scan myself every day and kind of see where we were at. So <laughs> I watched, I watched this pregnancy grow and right from the beginning, like maybe five, six weeks, it was like, I was lagging a day behind. But my rational mind wouldn't pick that up. I was just like, oh, maybe I was off with my dates. Maybe I was measuring wrong. And I kind of just didn't let myself believe what was happening. And then eventually at 10 weeks, it was like I could see the heartbeat one time. And then I would check the next time and there was no heartbeat. And at this point, I was supposed to be measuring 10 weeks, but it's really only measuring seven. So I had already lagged three weeks behind. And I kind of knew, okay, that something's not right here. Right. It, it, it was this weird paradigm or like part of me knew something's not right here, but my emotional side was like, this is my baby. Like, of course it's fine. It's fine. I'm just measuring incorrectly or right. Um, so we ended up miscarrying that baby then. And that was really hard because I got to watch the heartbeat develop. I got to connect with that baby. Like I have videos of my baby's heartbeat that then miscarried. Uh, and that was, that was really tough. And then the next, and then the yeah. summer we had had another miscarriage. And that was when I had spoken with my manager. She was fabulous and she really helped me out. And then we had, because we work at the fertility clinic, they had started doing my blood work and they noticed my progesterone was low. So then they suggested I take progesterone. So I took that for a month and I mentally was so unstable. I lost myself and that was really hard. And I just stopped. And it was another one of those surrender moments of like, this is not right for me. And I know that. And if I meant to only have one, I meant to only have one. If I meant to have more, they will come, but I'm, I can't yeah. do this. It was like, I knew there had to be another way. And once again, it's like, I, my job, like I'm scanning pregnant women all the time. I'm scanning the women in the fertility all the time. And I, I know what they go through. And I was like, that's not for me. Yeah. And then that was a really interesting time because it was like the height of this group, like the weight of this grief and this pain. And it was just this knowing that there had to be another way. And it, I don't even know how it started anymore, but it was like the series of synchronicities that eventually led me to this one chiropractor out of the States who was very confident in his statement that every single one of his patients would get pregnant within three months of a gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free diet. Wow. And I was like, he's confident. I was yeah. like, I don't know anybody who's ever done this diet. I don't know. 
And then I was like, you know what? I got nothing to lose. So December 1st, I cut it all out. And within three days, it was like, it was, I wasn't as anxious anymore. And then I could sleep at night. Cause I mean, throughout a lot of this, I just wasn't sleeping well. And then it was like, I could sleep and I could like feel this like clarity, which was really cool. Uh, and then that month we got pregnant with our second son. Wow. <laughs> and it was just like, wow. it was, it was like, I had this knowing that it was like, it worked and like, oh man, there's just so many stories now. So how I found out I was pregnant with my son, I was going to work actually on boxing day because I was the one coming in on the holiday to scan the women because they still need to be scanned in their cycles. So you would go in in the morning and do a couple, scan a couple patients and then come home again. So I left in the morning and it was really icy. So I was being very careful and sure enough, I spun out on black ice and I totaled my car. Oh my gosh. I was able to walk out of it. Um, I did have concussion, which I probably should have taken more seriously, but I just, you know, you try and brush it off. Right. I walked out. I was fine. Like, and, uh, I had this knowing that I was pregnant and I was so excited to go to work that morning. Cause I wanted to scan and see how what my lining was. Uh, but then I couldn't go into work obviously. And then I took a, the rest of the week off. So then by the time I did get into work, then I could see a gestational sac and I, it was confirmed that I was pregnant. So I never did take a pregnancy test or anything. It was like this kind of knowing. Yeah. Uh, I love that. But then it was from that accident. I had gone to my massage therapist and she was the one who told me, it was kind of like this, like gentle disclaimer in the beginning. She's like, you know, Thea, you just experienced a trauma, whether you want to realize it or not. Mm -hmm. And yes. we store these emotions in our body. So as I massage, you're going to feel these emotions come up and she's like, feel free to cry, express it in whatever way. Wow. And I was, I was like, wait, what? I was like, I just got chills. Oh, emotions <laughs> in yeah. our body. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, like grief and sadness and pain. We store it in our bodies if we don't express it. And I was like, really? Did we store grief in our body? I was like, that would have been helpful to know when I was going through my miscarriages. I mean, that would have been helpful to know when I experienced grief in my family. Like I've lost really close loved ones. And it like blew my mind. I was like, I had no idea. So she's doing the massage and like, I start crying and it just felt so great. Like I just felt so light. And I think that was one of the moments I don't think I realized in that moment, but especially now telling the story, looking back, like that was definitely a pivotal moment where it like changed my perspective. Uh, like what is emotion? Like, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I would say it was a couple months after that, that was when I really started learning about meditation and actually meditating and doing daily practices. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then I guess we can fast forward because then when I learned about quantum touch, so basically I had that whole experience and then I had my second son and it was beautiful. I was off on that leave. And when I was off on that leave, I was like, you know what? I don't want to go back to work. I don't want to go back to my job as an ultrasound tech because yeah. I know so much more to life and to our experience and to the body and to wellness that we don't talk yeah. about. In how, how, yeah. How can you go back now knowing this new wisdom, exactly. not knowing what you know? It, it was like, I had so many experiences like that. And I'm like, I can't go back. I'm not that same person. And I, so then it was really just this, like, I want to help women. Like, I want to help women heal and heal women on like a whole level. And that was when I learned about quantum touch. I saw a YouTube video of Richard Gordon and that was in, I think it was in July. And then there was a weekend in August. I wanted to gather some girlfriends and go away for the weekend because I was like, I hadn't done that in a while. I was like, my son's now 11 months old. I can leave him for a couple, like I can leave him for a day or two. It'll be okay. And then sure enough, none of my girlfriends were free. I learned about quantum touch. There was a workshop in my area. And what I mean by in my area, it was only two hours away on yeah. that same weekend that I wanted to get away with some girlfriends. <laughs> so I told my husband and he was like, go. And I was like, awesome. So I booked a hotel and I went away for the weekend and I learned quantum touch. And it blew my mind because I was not raised with the concept of energy. I wasn't around anybody. Like I came from the medical side. Like no one talks about energy and emotions and breath. Yeah. So it was yeah. just this like 
whoa. And like, I was so excited and I came home and I wanted to share it with everybody. And everyone thought I was crazy. Like I, I would share it with people and then I wouldn't talk to them for another couple of weeks. And I was like, what, what happened? Like, where did they go? <laughs> I know. And then I was like, okay, yeah, no, I've just gone crazy. Like this, this I've gone crazy. And I like kind of put it on the back shelf and I didn't think about it, but there was like something pulling me to it. Yeah. So then in November, I had booked a second workshop in Toronto and I went, and then that was when I was like, no, this is real. This is the, there is something to it. And then that was when I decided to become a practitioner. And then I was certified come July. And then that kind of coincides with the pregnancy of our daughter. So we had been trying, uh, I think for like a year or so, and we weren't getting pregnant and I didn't even have my period back. And Richard Gordon did a self-created health workshop and he did it virtually. So I had taken that and it was fabulous. And he, so self-created health is learning basically the root of our issue on the emotional level. So it's the idea that these emotions are stored in our bodies because we weren't able to express them in that moment. And now that is the cause of all of these symptoms and diseases that come down the line. Yes. And for those who are... Sorry, and for those who are not familiar and who are listening is, you know, quantum touch level one is where most people begin their energy healing journey. Um, it's usually the, pre- rec- the prerequisite for almost every workshop. Is it for self-created health? Apparently not. Okay. I, so don't think, you, I think you can go right into self-created health. Okay. You can take it as a standalone. Yes. Self-created health is powerful. And like you said, the emotion. So talk mm-hmm. more about that, because I think that is something that people are, we've got a lot of emotions percolating in our society. We've got fear, we've got scared, we've got always got emotions, yeah. but yeah, we have people now who are, like, it's rising, it's boiling up, but people yes. can't ignore that it's there. Um, but yeah, tell me more about self-created health, because I want to hear more about your story. <laughs> yes. So I was just amazed by it. So right away in the beginning, Richard Gordon's asked for a volunteer and I like put up my hand. <laughs> And then I told them my problem. I was like, we've been trying to get pregnant for a year. I don't even have my period back. I stopped breastfeeding. Like, I I don't know. I'm like, I know energy work. I do with quantum touch level one. I've been running the energy and I'm just not getting anywhere. And it took them a bit to dig and like to discover the root. And I was almost getting that feeling of like, oh my gosh, this isn't going to work for me. Like I'm doomed. Like he can't even figure out what those emotions are inside of me. Um, but then eventually he got it and it was s- repressed anger from when I was mm. a kid time when I was a kid that I couldn't express that anger. And it was like deep seated. And there was a lot of attachment around what I believe my identity needs to be as a parent. It was almost like I needed to be this because I'm, I'm a good parent. Yeah. And there was a lot of beliefs that do not serve me in terms of yeah would you uh, mind sh- would you mind sh- be comfortable sharing some of those things that you thought that you needed to be because I do feel like there are other women out there who especially mothers young mothers um, yeah. mom, moms in general who put this pressure on themselves mm-hmm. and I, it's all constantly this but am I doing enough so I would love to hear more about what those specific beliefs were if, if you're comfortable mm-hmm. with sharing them mm-hmm uh yeah I mean I had this like warped idea that I could just have a lot of kids and close together and I could do it. And and then I could prove to everyone that I'm a good person because I was able to do it. Do you know what I mean? It was like that. I don't even know how else to explain it. It was like, I put my identity of being a good person in my ability to appear like a good parent. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, Oh, look at Thea. She had five kids in five years and she's doing it. She's a good person. Right. Like that is what I felt like I needed to accomplish to prove to people that I was a good person. And I didn't even realize it. So when we're going through this process and, and expressing, like feeling the emotions and then feeling where they came from and it was heavy. And I look back and I'm like, why would I think that? right? But I did. So, so then it was coming back to the, no, I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Like I don't need to have kids to prove I'm a good person. Like I don't need to have kids to love myself. I, I don't need to have a lot of kids to prove I love myself or do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 
So letting go of that and really just coming back to loving myself and, and then the extension of that love. Now I get to share that with other people. Like that's the kind of mother I wanted to be. Uh, so we work through the self-created health process, which starts with identifying the emotions, feeling the emotions. And then there's kind of like a seven step series that eventually will lead you to feeling the gratitude and feeling the self-love. Yes. There's forgiveness in there too. Forgiveness is a huge one, learning how to forgive. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the next month I got my period and two months later I got pregnant with Jane. And once again, when I got pregnant with her, I think I was like at day 26 or 27. And I said to my husband, I was like, We're, like, I'm pregnant. Like, I know it. And he's like, well, you're going to take a test. And I was like, well, I don't need to. And then I just waited a couple of days. And then of course, I, I mean, I, cause I work in ultrasound. So I just checked my lining and I was like, yeah, my lining's pretty thick. Like this is, this is it. Like, I just, I feel it. And, uh, that was such a magical pregnancy because I felt like I connected with her right from the beginning. And it was like different because I had expressed those kind of emotions that were kind of holding me trapped. And I, it was like, I released that whole idea of what it means to be a good parent. And I could just be present. It was like, I didn't have to, I didn't have to pretend or I didn't have to, I don't know. I didn't have to prove myself. And that, yeah. that was really powerful. I love that. Yeah. The self-worth and the self-acceptance being good enough is good enough as you mm -hmm. are. And I love the self-created health process. And for those who are listening and not familiar one of um, the things I see in the spiritual community and the healing community um, sometimes is sort of a, uh, I call it distracted bypassing. <laughs> um, and I, I know I'm, I've been guilty of it. I'm not going to say, oh, I've never bypassed. But sometimes like you said, like we brush things off too, because we're just, we just say, I'm too busy to feel grief. I'm too busy to feel anger. The bill's got to get paid. There's got to be food on the table. Like there's no time for that. Mm -hmm. And self-created health, um, I love the processes inside of there because I had a lot of um, anger as well. I still, you know, think anger is a very beautiful and powerful emotion. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things I loved about self-created health was the process that we have for processing anger. How many people are not taught? Where do I take this anger? What is a method or an approach I can use to process it in a healthy way? And the same goes for sadness. You know, one of the things I think we say in self-created health is, you know, Richard says, you know, set it, set a timer for, you know, 30 minutes or 20 minutes and be sad. And I, when I first did it, I was like, it's crazy. I, and I remember trying to make myself be happy. Like, no, I can't sit here for 25 to 30 minutes and make myself feel sad about things, you know, but I thought of like, you know, where the red fern grows, Bambi, you know, every sad Disney, every dog that's died in a Disney movie. I was like, oh my God. But then, you know, the timer went off, which is, you know, part of the process. And you don't have to think about dogs, you know, passing away in order to, to feel it. But it was, it was amazing to me how much came up of how much sadness and disappointment and tears that needed to be processed out of the body. And, you know, more and more, um, you know, healing modalities, as we know, we're focusing on, hey, like, we've got emotions stored in the body. It's got to go somewhere. Trauma gets stored in the body. People don't even know what's stored in the body. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing this global movement of, you know, people like, yeah, massage, uh, you know, foam rolling, 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 whatever on you, you know, food. It just, it seems to be everywhere. Like, Hey, and there just seems to be a more, uh, trauma informed or trauma awareness building of, you know, mm -hmm. what this means down the line, why mm -hmm. we do the things we do. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it is. I, yeah, I love quantum touch in that regard. And it's, it's amazing. Everyone's stories. And, and when you said the medical side. For those who are listening, is we have so many medical people, nurses, doctors, um, you know, just people who are like, yeah, they come in and they're, you know, we have a lot of engineers. <laughs> and I always love watching the science people, you know, the medical based people when they come into classes because they're always, I always see the engineers in the corner, like, how does this work though? Like, I see their little wheels turning and I'm like, like, but how, but how does it work? I'm like, I don't know. We're running energy. Like, Here's the mm -hmm. method, here's the technique, but we don't know like the how. I can't tell you what cells link up and go over here. They might be doing that. They might not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the hedge trimmer going by. Hopefully um, that won't pick up my <laughs> recording. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, make sure my uh, settings are on uh, 
a muted level there. So yes, I love hearing about that. Um, and I think like you said, I, I love when you said that you knew there had to be another way. This could not be the only way. Mm -hmm. like, there was that avenue, not out of hope, but like just, I just feel like a beam of light. Like there is another way. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just finding it. Um, yeah. And it was just like holding space for it. Right. And like I said, it was like a series of synchronicities. Like suddenly I became of online events. Like I had never heard of an online summit and somehow I found myself onto a summit and it led to a speaker who led to a speaker who led to a speaker kind of thing. Yeah. And it was just like my curiosity just kind of like, Oh, well, what's that? Oh, what is that? Like I had never heard of that before. And then it eventually led me to hearing this chiropractor who said it. And I was like, he is confident. Like I got nothing to lose. Like I am faced with doing fertility medication. Uh, so yeah, I can cut some stuff out for a month and see if this works or, uh, but, and then it was like, I think that helped develop the trust because yeah. it was like, I had the thought there had to be a better way. And then suddenly it was like, I followed this path of curiosity and it led me somewhere and then it worked. And I was like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. So maybe there is another way. Cause then the same thing happened when I was like, I want to help women heal. Like, it's not just me. There's other people too. And then that's what led me to Richard Gordon. And I think one of the things I love about quantum touch is very adamant from the beginning is all healing is self-healing. So yes. I quickly learned that I can't heal anybody. I can provide the space. I can provide this energy and then women can entrain to it. And it's just trusting that their body knows how to heal. Yes. And I love this, especially for fertility, because we don't know how you grow a baby. My son actually said this to me. <clears throat> we're talking about regrowing limbs or, or something like that. And then he's like, well, can you regrow a bone? And I was like, well, what do you think? And he's like, well, how did your body know how to grow our bones? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, if we grew in your tummy, how did you know to grow our bones? And then I was like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. How did I? I don't how, know. Yeah. Where does that it's knowledge just, come from? <laughs> trusting that your body knows. Yes. So then... <clears throat> I love that about this energy work because it's like, okay, let's just create this energy field and make it available. And now your body can entrain to it and your body will use that as it sees fit where it needs to. And I don't need to know that. You don't really need to know that. You just need to trust that your body knows how to heal. And I feel like with quantum touch, and I love everything you're saying is quantum touch, you know, and energy work in general brings us back to trusting our body. And I feel like, especially in the medical field, but particularly along, you know, women's fertility journeys, because I have many friends who express their, you know, frustrations and difficulties, um, you know, with fertility. And it's like, it's like my body's doing this thing and I'm out of control. And it's like, and it's, I'm not to say that, you know, but, and, but in that moment, they do feel out mm -hmm. of control. It does feel like the body's just doing whatever it wants to do. And, and I feel like with quite, with healing is we take this renewed sovereignty. And part of that renewed sovereignty is, that, that trust of like, my body knows what to do. I know, you know, this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, but yeah, talk more. I would love to hear more about like when you said the knowing and the trust, I think that's the biggest thing is, um, cause then people start saying, okay, well, if I can't do it by myself, I now have to put my trust in, you know, medical science, which isn't always bad. Obviously there's a, there's a place for it in mm -hmm. medical science, you know, mm -hmm. modern medicine is on amazing things for fertility as well as, mm -hmm. you know, saving babies that, mothers and mm -hmm. don't want to poo poo that, um, you know, so yeah, but yeah, any more experience yeah, building the trust. That's where I was going with. Building yeah. the trust. And I, I mean, I think it's just learning to trust yourself. Okay. It's just knowing that your body knows how to heal and then trusting what that looks like for you, because it's not going to look the same for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it will look like for me, it led me down. Okay. It changed my diet. And then it's like, I made lifestyle changes. I learned meditation. I dove deep with emotions. Like that was kind of the path that I needed to take. Maybe someone's path does involve medical treatment. And it's just knowing that now you're being guided to that, right? Because yes. if that is what you need, then you will be guided to that. I 100% believe that. And yes. if that is not what you need, then it's just trusting that you will be guided to what you do need. Yes. Agreed. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I think the emotions, and this is what I'm starting to dive into more, 
the emotions play a huge part. And part of me wishes I had this understanding when I was scanning the women in fertility, because I was young, I was fresh out of school. Like I wasn't even married. I wasn't even in the space of wanting to have kids. Like I was a really young, uh, and like, I just didn't understand the grasp of emotions and trauma. Uh, so it would be interesting now to be with those women. Although that's what I'm kind of, cre- I, bleh, that's what I'm creating now with the energy work, because I want to help these women. Uh, because there is so much unexpressed emotions. And I know where I worked, it was a great fertility clinic and they had counseling alongside, like that was kind of a mandatory part, which I think is really important, but it's yeah. almost like it needs to go one step further mm-hmm. in feeling mm-hmm. the emotions and understanding it. And like the soma- like somatically, what is that? Like feeling your body, right? Agree. Cause I think in so many times, and this isn't to like negate like counseling or talk therapy, because it obviously can be very helpful. For, I mean, mm-hmm. there is something healing when people allow their words to hit the air. There is a freedom and a liberation inside mm-hmm. of that. Um, and there is an energetic component to it. But what do we do when the, the words that are hitting the air are the same words every single time? What kind of cycle could that perhaps be creating? Um, and then if it drums up all these emotions and people walk out of there, like, well, what do I do with this now? Mm-hmm. I just talked mm-hmm. about it, but now I don't feel any better. So I think you said mm-hmm. that one step further, feeling mm-hmm. the emotion mm-hmm. um, and feeling emotion. I, I get the sense is like, you know, we're talking about mental health is like, you know, so many times, you know, and it's in the States, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, go to work. And they treat us like robots. Like we go to work and, you know, anything you experience outside of work should not affect work. It's like, but we're human. We're mm-hmm. not machines. We are human. You know, mm-hmm. we see something traumatic. We're experiencing something in our life. We are going to feel it. And like I said, brushing it off just doesn't stop doesn't seem to be help. It doesn't seem to be the, uh, uh, a resonant way mm-hmm. and we're seeing it. It's trickling down, um, you know, so, mm-hmm. uh, in ways that are coming out in not so great ways for people. Um, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, so, but yeah, that, I love that. And tell me, so tell me more about your work with women now. I'm so excited to hear about it. Yeah. So it's taking an energetic approach to the healing. Okay. So a woman comes to me and they're not getting pregnant. And I just ask them, well, can you share your story with me? And it is fascinating to hear the details that they share with me. And I've also noticed this as an ultrasound tech, because you would ask them and everybody would get a different story. Like the patient would tell a different part of the story to each professional. Uh, But it's like, I truly believe that that's what is holding them that part of their story. And then it's like, okay, let's dive into that. And so it's kind of taking a bit of the self-created health aspect into it. And it's like, where do you feel that emotion in your body? Like they make some comment about how it was hard to get pregnant at this moment. And then it was like, okay, now how did that feel? And where do you feel that in your body? Okay. Let's run the energy there and start with that. And then just noticing what comes up. And a lot of what's been coming up lately is sexual abuse. Mm. These women have this, it happened earlier on. Maybe they're aware of it. Maybe they're not, maybe it's coming up, but it's one of those secrets that they hold onto and that it, it holds in their pelvis. And so it's like, okay, so you brought that up. Let's bring healing to that, right? Let's, let's bring up the emotions. Let's, let's work through that. And that has been very powerful. And but it's, it's all these trapped feelings, right? Like feelings of abandonment as a child, um, feelings of not being seen. It's, it's all of these feelings that we don't want to talk about. Yes. Um, body image, right? Eating disorders. These are all things that we don't want to talk about. But then when we're not talking about it, we're holding it in. We're not letting it out. And then we're storing that in our bodies, right? And then it's going to cause all of, it's going to cause like this ripple effect, right? And that absolutely affects our fertility. Yes. So yeah. it's it's almost like when we can become honest with ourselves and then bring love to that part of ourselves and love ourselves through it. And then we can forgive ourselves for hiding away behind it or holding on to it, right? It's It's like we become aware of it. Let's observe it. Maybe get curious. 
Like, what does this mean? Why are we holding on to this? What else does this affect? Okay, now let's love it because it is a part of us. Let's love it. Let's just love ourselves completely. And it softens. It softens and it moves, right? Yes. And yes. now you have this appreciation for your body. You have this You have this technique that you can use. It's so powerful. And if we just keep doing that, and then we'll level in, we add in the levels of the chakras, right? The energetic centers yeah. in our bodies. It's so powerful. And I, and I love a quantum touch. Thank you for sharing all of that is, um, is the love aspect. Cause you know, oftentimes people are like, well, you know, what the hell, what does that mean? How to love myself. But in, in our quantum touch courses that we teach that all the quantum touch practitioners technique. And for those listening, you take a quantum touch course in Canada or take a quantum touch course in China or take a quantum touch course in the States. It'll all be the same curriculum. You know, have a very uniform, you know, we're all professionally trained. We all go through the same training, but I love the techniques that we have for tapping back into love and how easy it is. Mm-hmm. The people think, Oh, it's, you know, love. Like, well, how do you tap into that? You know, people think love it's romantic love. It's like, well, no, like, you know, we are relearning how to love ourselves. It's one, one major theme um, that I've been going through myself for this year is like, well, what does it really mean to love yourself? Mm-hmm. What does that really even mean? You know? Um, and one of the courses in quantum touch level two, we talk about breathing and sweeping and amplifying energy from the heart. And I have seen in courses in workshops as well, where we have participants where we're doing the quantum technique, te- quantum touch techniques of breathing and sweeping the intention amplifying the heart energy, um, but breathing and sweeping energy into that pelvic area and those muscles, how much they hold on to. Mm-hmm. Even my friends who are body workers and massage therapists, like those are the hardest muscles to work with because they are so dense. They're so, they're so nitty gritty in there and they so and they connect to so many things, mm-hmm. um, but how much gets stored inside of there. And as we do the quantum touch and breathe and sweep is a powerful emotion. Mm-hmm. I mean, that grown, and I've, I've seen grown men even crying, you know, just letting it all go. And oftentimes there is, you know, history of abuse or, you know, abuse and neglect. Um, and of course that plays into the, as you're saying, the chakra centers. So I would love to hear more about, you know, your take on quantum touch and healing with the chakras and the, the healing centers mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. I, sh- the chakras are very powerful. And I think this is, so interesting, especially for me, because I didn't know what a chakra was until my first level one course. I had no idea. I think I had heard this, the term in a movie, but I had no idea what it was and nobody around me ever talked about it. And especially coming from medicine, there was no acknowledgement in my field where I was. So the way we learn about it in quantum touch is the instructor will do a meditation and allow you to experience it. And that's simply it. She the instructor guides you through a meditation. You experience each one in quantum touch. We have the seven chakras in the body, which are traditionally placed. And that meditation was mind blowing. Like it took me out of my body. It took me to different places, like this greater awareness. Like I was, I felt my body in a whole different way. And I was speechless afterwards. And it was amazing. And then when I tried to do that meditation on my own, of course, then that kind of fell into that hole. I'm like, oh no, I've gone crazy. Like what the heck was this experience, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, yeah. But then when I did it for the second time, I was like, wow. And I've just, I, I was reading up on chakras, but then I felt like, no, I don't need to read up on it. I just need to experience it. Like, what does that mean for me? Like, I can't just read up on what other people tell me. It, it Like that just didn't feel right. So then I stopped trying to learn about it. And I guess at that point, I didn't make it a main focus of my work either. But what I noticed with clients is all of a sudden it was like these chakra energies were coming in. It was like, before I realized it was like the energy was swirling with blue. And I was like, I had this awareness of the throat chakra. And I was like, whoa. So my experience with chakras is almost like the chakras were leading me. It was like, I was running the energy. And then all of a sudden the chakras would do what they needed to do or like that energy was present and it was powerful. And then that's been growing. So now that I feel this experience of it, I share that with others. So with my fertility program is each week, we really focus 
on the chakras and like, what does a chakra mean for you? What does it feel like? What is coming up when we have our attention on the root mm-hmm. chakra? Yes. And it's like, let's deep dive into this. And then it's not just for me to provide that energy. It's for you to feel it. Like so, what does yeah. the root chakra so, feel in my body? Yes. Yeah. So do women, um, do they also, as you're doing the, um, the quantum touch techniques, um, are they also, is there something that they do? Are they also breathing and sleeping while experiencing this? I encourage my clients to breathe along with it. Got it. So okay. in quantum touch, we learn it's like a rhythmic circular breath. Yes. Which I've laid, which I've learned is one of the breaths they most recommend for trauma, uh, which I thought was really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> so I just encourage them just like a rhythmic, like inhale, feel your body expand on your inhale and then exhale, feel your body soften on your exhale and just continue with that like rhythmic breath and really just feeling into the sensations in your body. Yes. I love that. And it's a br- feeling into the body. Mm-hmm. How many people don't have time, uh, perhaps don't always take the time to stop and feel mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. am I really feeling? Checking in, really checking in. Mm-hmm. I love that. So yeah. Tell me more about your fertility program. Um, sounds amazing with quantum touch. Yeah. So basically what I've learned with quantum touch and like through my own experience with fertility and my own experience of wanting to help these women. And yeah, I've just, I've just had a number of women coming forth with sexual abuse issues with, with, with that. And I'm like, how can we address this? So it's like, okay, let's take the quantum touch and let's run the energy and help them feel and move through this. So it's an eight week program and we have one-on-one sessions where we get to work with these, where I work with these women and it's, we'll focus on one chakra. That might be the theme, but of course it's all connected. So other aspects are going to come in and really it's teaching them how to breathe into their body, how to feel their body, how to be present. Because the other thing is once you start breathing into this, like a lot can come up and it can be scary. So it's teaching them how to feel safe in their body. Okay. That's the the number one thing it's use your breath to feel safe in your body. And it's like, once we can feel safe in our body, okay, now that we can explore this. So that's why it's eight weeks. It's one-on-one with them. Like, let's make sure that you're safe and you can work through this. Mm -hmm. And really it's teaching them the tools to breathe into those spaces uh, so we deep dive into emotions, uh, breath work, uh, simply understanding our cycle, right? Like day one is the first day of your bleed day 14 typically is when you ovulate. And then day 28 is typically the end of your cycle. So it's learning how to feel and be present in your body with those cycles and to feel those cycles. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Recently I've noticed since I stopped nursing my daughter my periods have sunk up with the moon which is fascinating so I'm learning about that because I want to bring that into because I think there is so much to that right to tuning into the energies and it's like okay well when's a good time to release and when's a good time to manifest like set your intentions to bring in what you want right so it's kind of rediscovering our cycles and how that feels in our body yeah. And then how that interacts with every aspect of our life. And yeah, I love that. You know, absolutely it does. And, yeah. and I think also too, is, you know, at least in the States is, you know, there's sort of this love hate relationship that women have with their cycle. You know, we spend our first several years of life hating it, hating that it's there, you know, oh, it's so inconvenient. I don't want to get pregnant. And then, when it, but, but then when it comes time, it's okay. I want to, you know, work. Hey body mm-hmm. now don't mm-hmm. come. <laughs> mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. body probably is very confused. Like, well, you just, had a whole love hate relationship with me. So yeah. And I think is now, um, you know, going through my own journey of healing my, like my relationship with my cycle was I view it as a, as a good thing. It's like, no, this is a good thing. This is an indicator of health. Like, um, Absolutely. Yes. So, yeah. so I teach women how to love that part of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, and be present yeah. with it. Where else we, yeah. So we go into the chakras. I, somatic movement right it's not just about sitting and breathing like we need to move and express mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this is so helpful with the hips uh right move those emotions through us right learn 
healthy techniques of feeling emotions and expressing them and movement is a huge part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, movement. Yes. And the quantum, you know, the quantum touch is, um, it's a very engaging technique. That's what I love about, I mean, I've, I've been trained in Reiki and in quantum touch. And the thing I love about quantum touch is the active role that our, our, our clients or whoever is receiving also plays, you know, it's not just this path of like sit back and receive, which, you know, there's a time and a place for that at times, but mm -hmm. I love how quantum touch is like, no, like they, they have to engage with their process, mm -hmm. you know, in order to raise us out of that very vibration of, you know, fear. It's like the practitioner already has to be not above the client, but raising the resonance, raising the vibration. We also have to entrain that person, teach them how to entrain themselves mm -hmm. with where we need to go. Um, it was, how do we get from here to there if we're all still operating in the same black hole? <laughs> I was like, how mm -hmm. do we get out of the hole? Someone's already got to be out of the hole <laughs> mm -hmm. to help, to help guide everyone out. Um, so, uh, and that's what I love about quantum touch is a, is a healing modality. And, um, of course, you know, for those who aren't familiar, you know, our, our three are kind of our triangle beliefs is, you know, uh, breathing intention and, um, oh, oh my God, I got, <laughs> I know, I know, um, but, uh, and, you know, makes it a little bit different than, um, and I have Reiki practitioners come and take the quantum touch courses. The breath component is the, is the component they're often missing. I'm like, you're already doing this thing. You know, the, the sound techniques, the color techniques that we are teaching, you know, um, I said, but now you're just amplify all of it with the breath, mm -hmm. with the life force energy. Um, so, and, uh, I think we're going to see more of a rise in this new way to approach trauma. And there's more, no, more than one way to skin a cat. And we've been seeing, you know, it's like, oh, you know, breath workshops and, mm -hmm. you know, the cow and everyone's like, oh, there's this new way. So there, there's just so many different doors and avenues. Um, mm -hmm. I know numerologically we are in a seven year you know, spiritual expansion. And I really do sense that people are going to be like, okay, you know, I, I, my guides and like, you know, people are going to start coming to us because we're going to start realizing there has to be another way. I've done this way, the modern way. Modern way is taking me only so far. There's got to be some. There's got to be a next step. There's got to be something else. Um, there's the synchronicities of just following. Kind of, kind of, kind of like a handful and Gretel with a little bread, a little you know, the candy crumbs are being dropped. It kind of feels like that. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Um, so uh, yeah, um, and uh, I do sense there'll be there will be a, a, a rise of people seeking out quantum touch and energy work. And I think and all energy healing modalities in general, because mm -hmm. I don't think fertility is, I do sense that people are going to have difficulty with conception, mm -hmm. but it's, it's going to be of the environmental stressor and the emotional stressor of experiencing a collective global trauma, mm -hmm. you know, world lockdown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, but you know, people were saying, Hey, I was in lockdown and I was doing it the entire time, you know, and it's like, oh, but I didn't get pregnant. <laughs> what happened there? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I sense that it's, you know, we are we're right on that edge. Where, yeah. I mean, people have been finding us, but I think it's, um, you know, more so. Or, mm -hmm. or, well, and I think that's yeah. one of the great things about quantum touch is it gives you a tool. Yes. It's, yes. It's like, okay, you learn this process and it creates, creates healing in your life. But yes. now you have that tool moving forward. So when you're presented with that challenge or that stressor, you can simply observe and tune into your breath and, and be present through it, right? It doesn't have to have, now you know how to express those emotions, right? So you don't need to store them in your body. Yes. And one of the things I love a quantum touch as well, very similar to other energy modalities is we can send energy into the past, mm -hmm. energy into the future, energy into the present. And one of the things I've been doing for clients where abuse or neglect does come up is um, sending energy back to that very moment in time and even more so the day they're born. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something very powerful um, I've been noticing is, you know, I have clients I say, imagine the day that you're born and, you know, it's not the doctor who's pulling you out of your mother's womb or, you know, where, even if you don't know who your, your mother was, it's you. And there's just this powerful connection of this renewed sovereignty. And I really feel it's a lot about that capability of like, you've got you, you can trust yourself with you now. And, um, it's, you know, very powerful, you know, people cry and I, 
you know, and, and, we're, and we're just breathing and sweeping, running that love, unconditional love energy into that very moment. And of course, people say, okay, well, how does one know when that moment was? I say, well, hey, I just take the date that, you know, the date that you're born and you use your imagination. I think it's the other thing I love about quantum touch is there's place for the imagination to play, which also strengthens the third eye. I know when I um, took my quantum touch training, it was like third eye expansion on crack. You know, people, how did you become so psychic? And, da, da, da. and I'm like, well, look, I'm like, you know, I did a lot of energy work, but part of the lucky side effect, <laughs> lucky side effect was the amplification of that third eye energy. Um, Cause there was a place to play. There was a playground to play in of imagination. Yeah. Um, so um, that's another technique that we do in quantum touch is, you know, we're, you know, we can send energy into the past, but we really take it a step further of like, mm-hmm. now imagine the day that you're born. Now imagine, I remember sending energy back to um, when I was a cluster of cells, you know, I just <laughs> was like, whoa, <laughs> like profound. Um, and these are, t- and he said, it's a process yeah. that people yeah. can do on their own. Um, so Thea, um, yeah. So anything else do we have about a minute? We have a couple five minutes left. Anything else that you want to talk about or add? Um, any I guess programs things- you have going on? Shamelessly self-promote. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I kind of pivoted before I was kind of general, if you will, with quantum touch. And now I really want to focus on fertility. I really want to focus on women and connecting to that love and, and healing all that which we hold on to that we feel we can't express. Uh, So I have an eight week program where we work one-on-one. We really kind of deep dive into what's going on for you and teaching you the skills to, to move forward. Right. And I truly believe if you can do this before you get pregnant, then you're in a healthy state, right? You're going to have a smoother pregnancy. You're going to have a smoother labor. You're going to feel connected to your child. You'll feel more prepared postpartum. Like it's not just to get pregnant. It's really to set yourself up for this connection and this love with your whole journey. Uh, we have a group, uh, fertility friends. So we meet weekly it's weekly energy shares, group energy shares. Cause the really cool thing is the more we do these group energy shares, I realize a lot of us are feeling the exact same thing. And I think we're feeling more together than we want to be honest with. (laughs) <laughs> so these group energy shares are very powerful. So I'll run the energy for about 20 minutes and then we can have discussion and we can talk about it. And then it kind of gives that community aspect. Uh, so this is all on my app bloom, which you can download from any provider. Uh, and then there's access to free meditations there. So there's a three day meditation series really to bring us back into balance. So we deep dive into breath, attention and intention. And then I threw up a chakra meditation there too. So you can experience the chakras. Uh, it's so powerful. Yes, I love it. And Thea is a quantum touch ambassador. She's one of our official ambassadors for quantum touch. So um, we have several of them, but Thea, are you the only one in Canada for now? I think. No, no. I have another gentleman in uh, Ottawa, Gustavo. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So then, and then I also teach the workshop, right? So I teach yeah. the level one workshop. So I have a monthly workshop. Most of them are virtual. It seems to yeah. be easier to connect with people oh around gosh. the world. Yeah. And I just started teaching the energy boost one. So it's a quick two hour workshop to learn these techniques. So it's really easy. Everyone can do it. And um, it's yeah. really cool. My favorite part is that first half hour when you teach it and you see in their eyes that they got it and they're like, whoa, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can do it. It's I, beautiful. Yeah. I love the before and after picture. Like when I teach a class, a quantum touch level one course, and like I take a picture of like before mm-hmm. and I take a picture of after and like people see the differences in their energy. Like they just look lighter, they look brighter, um, you know, and they have fun doing it. So I love about quantum touch is that the workshops are interactive. It's like you said, it's not as passive, like sit back, listen to information. Like we are engaged. We are interactive. Like people are sending energy to each other from across the world. Um, you know, recently we did a pivot, you know, um, Richard and Jennifer did a pivot, um, to hosting our workshops online. I feel like that really expanded quantum touch as a whole. It just was like, oh my God, whole new, whole new paradigm. Um, yeah. I love so, it when there's in my classes, like different countries, different time zones, and we're all feeling it at the same time. Like, how is that possible? Yes. Thea, actually, when is the date um, of your next uh, quantum touch level one course do you have coming up? So the next level one workshop is February 25th and 26th. 
So that's a Saturday, Sunday, and it's virtual. And then I have an energy boost workshop coming up. It's February 14th. I thought that'd be perfect for Valentine's Day. Awesome. Really? Kind of teaching us is the true self-love. I feel like self-love has been hijacked, but it's really feeling into your love. Love it. Yes. And for those who are not familiar, who are listening, you know, quantum touch level one is our, um, is a two day workshop. It's usually seven days. It's all day But the energy boost. It's kind of like a dip your toe in the water. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, just try it, you know, before you commit to the full on workshop. Um, yeah. So my level one workshop, my next one is going to be March 24th, 25th and 26th. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been amazing. I, Quantum touch is just, yeah, it, I mean, obviously it's, it's life-changing. Um, mm-hmm. So anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to shamelessly self-promote? And where do people find you? If people look for you online, where's the your website or? Um, yeah, so you can find me on my website. It's www.theawillette.com. And I have everything about bloom and fertility listed there along with my quantum touch workshops. I mean, that's not specific to women and fertility. Those workshops are for everybody. Uh, So it's the level one workshop and the energy boost as well. I just created an app so you can download it. It's bloom by Thea Willette. So it's in Apple play. What is it? Apple app store and Google play store. (laughs) So you can download it. Uh, You can access the guided meditations for free. And then the fertility friends that is an added subscription. Uh, So that's kind of a intimate uh, group where we can really just be honest and share and experience that energy at the healing and you can find me on Instagram, also Thea Willette. Yeah. Yeah. And I, cool. I have some YouTube videos up. You can find me on the Quantum Touch website too. Yeah. Yes. And I will share, obviously this interview will be on my YouTube channel. When this interview airs on New Service Soul Radio, it will be available on um, the call within YouTube um, as well. And I'll make sure all of Thea's links are in there. And any, um, I guess, any lasting, any lasting words that you want to leave with listeners about anything? The one comment I wanted to make earlier, really about our love and this, when I heard Richard Gordon say this, it like really struck for me. Love is our essential nature. That's, that's who we are. Just like a rock doesn't need to be more rock-like. We don't need to be more love-like. Like we don't need to love ourselves more. Like a rock doesn't have to be more rock. It just, it is right. We just, we are love. So it was just a powerful reminder for me and yeah, love. Love it. No, no pun intended. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thank you, Thea, for being on for news for the soul radio. Um, you can find Thea. She'll be, um, on, on Instagram and YouTube, um, and make sure her links are included. And, um, and when is your next, is your eight week fertility program going right now? Or when's the next start date for the next? That's one-on-one with women. Okay. One-on-one. Okay. Wonderful. Whenever you are ready to journey, reach out to me. We can set up a discovery call and talk through if that's a good fit for you and we can get started right away. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Thea, so much. It was an honor to chat with you, an honor to hear about your journey. I know we ran some energy before we started this interview and we know that the energy is going to find whoever it needs to find and go wherever it needs to go. So thank you so much, Meredith. Yeah. Thank you.